Welcome back, everyone. I'm Trace. This is Seeker Plus. This is episode three of three in our series on matter. How's your brain feeling? I hope it's not too melty. If you haven't watched the first two episodes, go back and melt your brain a little bit. It's going to be great. Okay, let's do this. This is episode three. Matter is crazy. We're still talking about this stuff around us all the time, matter. Uh, we talked about how Greek philosophers thought about it. We talked about how scientists and chemists started to taxonomize matter. We've even talked about how there's matter all around us all the time that we don't understand. So now we're going to talk about the future, baby. We can take pictures of atoms. So what is matter when you can understand it at that level? Well, then it starts to get weird. So let's kick into it. Solid, liquid, gas, plasma, condensates, those are super cool. I mean, some of them are hot, not super cold or super hot, but you get it. Anyway, they are super interesting. Uh, and there are way more forms of matter than just solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and a couple of condensates. Scientists are currently trying to build out every form and phase of matter. I read an article for this episode in Quanta magazine where Ashvin Vishwanath was quoted, he's from Harvard, and he said, it all seems comprehensible. It's like stamp collecting, but each is a little different and with no connection between the stamps. It seems to Vishwanath that it could be more like a periodic table, that there are elements, but they fall into categories, and at the moment we can learn to understand those categories. Now, I know that this isn't a scholarly source that I'm about to read, but if you go to Wikipedia and you look up all of the different states of matter, they have a whole list there. And I'm just going to read some of these to you just to give you an idea of how many more states there are beyond solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and a couple of condensates. You ready? Okay. Excitonium. Neutron degenerated matter, which is also a good band name. Photonic matter. Quantum. Just quantum. Quantum spin liquid. String net liquid. Droppleton. Rydberg matter, time crystals, quark gluon plasma, strange matter. What does that even mean? I don't even know. And that's not even all of them. That's just a small selection. Obviously, there's no way that we can go through all of these types of matter in 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and most of these you're never going to see, and they will never impact your life in any way. Most are very rare, even in the lab. They require extra special conditions. They require crazy temperatures or pressures or circumstances. And we've talked about some of these on Seeker before. Excitons are electrons that get excited, and they make excitonium. They jumped in orbit and then back down. They act in little groups. So the hole that the electron left behind becomes a state of matter called excitonium. They're not really sure what it is. It could be a superfluid or a perfect conductor. It could be an insulator, but we'll have to make more of it to find out. We've also talked about time crystals. They used lasers to spin a bunch of ions of ytterbium, and they poked them around at a regular interval, like a beat in a song, but then at some point, they stopped poking them or they poked them differently, and they moved as if we were poking them. And that's breaking time symmetry. That's called a time crystal, and they might be good for quantum computing. And they also proved that time symmetry can be broken. It's really weird and crazy. But let's talk about some of the other types of matter that are a little closer to home, something that might actually be of interest to the average everyday human out there who just looks at matter all the time, right? For example, did you know there are at least 18 different types of water ice? Yeah, ice. What we would just call ice that's in your freezer right now, there are 18 different forms of ice that water can make. Ice, as we know it, is a solid latticework. It's a V-shaped water molecule that forms and collects together and then forms a solid structure, right? That's why water expands when it's frozen. It's a very rare thing to do in nature, but because of the shape of the molecules. Now, ice can also be cubic, symmetrical, ordered, disordered, crystalline. It all depends on the pressure and temperature that the ice is created in. So regular ice on Earth is called IH, or hexagonal ice. Crystalline, hexagonal shapes of molecules. So if that's just ice IH, there's also ice two, three, five, seven. They just keep adding. So they just give them a different number in Roman numerals. So the newest ice that they found is super ionic water, also known as ice seven, VII. It's theorized to exist inside of gas giants like Uranus and Neptune. 
It's 60% denser than the ice that we have here because of a cubic crystal shape with two interpenetrating frameworks. It was created under immense pressures and at super low temperatures. 253 kilogram force per square millimeter was used between two diamond plates, and they squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and froze it. The hydrogen inside of this superionic ice, or ice 7, can't stick with the oxygen anymore. It's just under too much pressure. It has to get out of there. So the oxygen gets stuck into this crystal lattice of frozen ice. The hydrogen ions can move around, which is why it's called superionic ice that melts into a liquid at 47,000 C. The lead researcher at UC Berkeley says, it's as though the water ice is partially molten. Isn't that awesome? And that's just water. That's just one of the many, many forms of water ice that exist. Matter is crazy. But let's talk about something a little more exciting, right? You didn't come to Seeker Plus to hear me talk about ice. <laughs> so let's talk about degenerate matter, which also, again, good band name. So there are plenty of forms of matter that are just wacky. So degenerate matter is super interesting. It does sort of sound like grandpa yelling at a kid in a leather jacket, but it's cooler than that. Degenerate matter is super dense matter that's under insane amounts of pressures. Quantum particles or fermions can't occupy the same state in the same system at the same time. So let's say there are two fermions. They can't both be type A fermions. That's just a thing I made up to try and make this simple. It's a little more complicated than that. But just to give you an idea, one could be type A and one could be something else, but they can't be two type A's. When you have degenerate matter, things are under such pressure that this starts to matter. That's not a pun, that's just real. If you put matter under just unimaginable pressures, like at the center of a neutron star, for example, that's the densest material known, you end up getting degenerate matter. Because quantum mechanics keeps the matter from compressing past a certain point, the point where two fermions would have to occupy the same system at the same time, the electrons instead have to move super fast. And they're moving around so much that as the pressure increases, the electrons start to approach the speed of light in their orbit of the nucleus. And any further past that, they can't pass the speed of light. The entire system collapses. The electrons and protons get smushed into neutrons, canceling out each other's charges, and then plah, you get degenerate matter. A neutron star is basically a giant nucleus of neutrons packed as tightly as possible. It's the densest material in the known universe. It's incredible, right? That's degenerate matter. Matter is super cool. Obviously, we could talk about this stuff all day. And if you have any types of matter that you think are really interesting, you should absolutely tell me more about them because this, again, hurt my brain to write all of these episodes. There are lots of forms of matter, though, that we haven't even discovered yet. For example, superglass, which was theorized in the early 2000s. It's a superfluid that's been frozen into an amorphous solid. Technically, it feels and looks like a solid, assuming you could touch it, but it's got no friction and no viscosity. And yet, somehow, it's still a solid. There was a paper called The Theory of Superglass that I read that they said that helium-4, which is a special type of helium, might be able to create superglass. And you might remember from earlier, helium is very special. It has a lot of different properties because it's a noble gas. You can supercool it and do all sorts of stuff. But if you supercool it right and in the right conditions, it can make something called superglass. Isn't that awesome? And again, there are still forms of matter that we're finding now and theorizing about now. We don't know what this periodic table of matter, if that's what our researcher earlier mentioned, we don't even know what that would look like yet. So if you think about it, this was only theorized in the early 2000s, meaning we're still trying to fill in that periodic table of matter that I mentioned earlier, and we're just now learning about some of these new things. Isn't that incredible? What an exciting time to be a material scientist, a materials engineer, and a physicist. By learning about these things, we don't just learn about neutron stars. We also learn about the conditions for life, how the universe is put together, and our place in it. Look, quantum physics is really stupid. But the more we learn, the more we go back to Thales and Democritus from earlier, remember, before your brain got scrambled? We're breaking matter up, we're asking questions about what happens, then we're breaking it again. 
And we've gotten to the point where we're not just breaking it, we're also putting it together and seeing if we can put it together under special conditions and what it does. As we put together a list of every type of matter, we're going to keep finding more and more little bits, little corners of matter that we didn't even know existed, that only exist when we put them together in a certain way. Like, if you stir cream, it becomes butter. Someone had to figure that out, right? They had to milk a cow or a goat, then they had to stir it a bunch, way past what other people were probably doing, and figured out, oh wow, this is cool, it becomes butter, which we can use for all sorts of great stuff. It's good on toast. Don't know if you, don't know if you knew that. Of course, ancient times, hopefully now you already knew that, but anyway, I digress. We have words for things like butter, but imagine, you know, if you could just stir up oxygen and create a whole different form of matter if you just did it longer or faster at a greater pressure than anybody else. Somebody has to figure that out, somebody has to try, and someday we will. Like a lot of other science, it doesn't seem to be super important to you right now, there's not a lot of practical applications for supercooled bits of water trapped between diamond plates. But maybe someday, stuff like that'll change the nature of the world. And understanding that matters. Thank you for watching Seeker Plus today. I hope you really enjoyed this series on matter. If you didn't watch all of the episodes, go back and watch all three of them. We're gonna put them in a playlist for you as well. You can find us over on Twitter at Seeker. Suggest some topics. Tell us what you wanna see from Seeker Plus. You can use the hashtag Seeker Plus. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Trace Dominguez. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.